mainly just a little bit about myself and how I stumbled in to these marvelous books. I'm just so proud of these books, you would not believe. The first one, The Master of Everything, that I have right here is I've been told it's a real page turner. And it's um, 86,000 words, but it's very, very understandable. And I wanted to make sure my readers, because you know, I, 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 I don't like picking up a book that someone had said the other day where it takes uh, a couple hours to read a paragraph. But, um, you know, upon my 12 years of Catholic education and a little bit of college at Kent State, I went into the United States Air Force and had some great times there. And, you know, I always wanted to be a writer ever since I was little. In fact, in my bio, it even it, it, if you've read it, it says, uh, I think at age 11, I wrote my first novel, which was never published. But I'd always been a football player, and it was called Reaching the Goal. And, and I was always inspired by Fran Tarkenton, if anyone knows who he was. In the 1960s, his number 10 quarterbacking first at the New York Giants and then onto the Minnesota Vikings. I just, just loved, that, loved that guy. In fact, he wrote a book for kids at the time when I was growing up in the 60s called Better Scramble Than Lose. And I thought that was a great t- touchy title. But my book was called Reaching for the Goal. But it, w- it was just a, you know, a stepping stone for me in writing. But when I, I went to college and went into the Air Force and I took all the literary areas in high school and college, but I never pursued writing. When I got out of the U.S. Air Force, I stumbled into the financial services business. And I started to do very well. And I thought I'd just give it a try for a few years. Well, during this give it a try for a few years, I started making money. Then there was cars I was buying and then house payments. And all of a sudden I had a couple children and, and the years went by and two girls uh, on to college. And all of a sudden, it's uh, 25 years had gone by. I had been in this business. I started at age 25. Now here at age 50 in 2007, I crossed an illegal line in the securities industry, um, which actually became a state crime. The feds didn't even want me because that's how serious of it, it was. It wasn't really serious at all, but um, a state judge thought it was serious. I manipulated some funds to recover money in a losing stock market from my clients and myself um, in, without the proper permissions. and. So one thing led to another, and it was a serious securities violations, all over an amount of money of $100,000 that was repaid and no one lost their money. Well, a harsh judge and a bad lawyer that I had um, sentenced me to 10 years in prison in a state penitentiary. And you talk about being floored when something like that hits you. Um, I had a lawyer that was known as a, as a, a great trial lawyer during his younger years in practice, and he was... Um, but it's about the same age as me. I'm 58 years old right now. And everyone told me, go see Jeff. He is the man to get you out of this problem you're in. Well, I, so I went to see Jeff. I trusted everything he could say, but he didn't do any, it didn't do me any good. Six months after I was in prison, I found out he died of a cocaine overdose. I didn't know he was having substance abuse problems when he was handling my case. And so I was literally um, handed on a platter to the prosecutor and the judge who both were running for election in that year, which was an election year, and both of those um, are elected officials in Ohio. So I was sentenced to uh, 10 years in prison with his long finger and pointy nose of the judge on, pointed his finger at me. I, I'm gonna teach you a lesson as I was standing there in shackles in an orange jumpsuit. And you know, the next financial advisor is gonna think twice about manipulating funds like you've done and blah, blah, blah. So off I went to prison. No chance of an early release, so anyways, uh, after eight years, that judge had retired, which during the time in prison, many pleas had went to him to release me early, but no go with this uh, uh, example setter judge. He retired in my, going on my eighth year of being in prison, another judge came forward out of retirement and uh, that my lawyer had worked out some arrangements and released me after eight years and yesterday was 13 months since I've been home from prison. So um, thank you. And I um, had a lot to do in the last 13 months. And you would not believe after eight years um, of being away how much things have changed. There's no computer in prison. And um, this book was written by hand. Uh, I found a public, or I'm, not, I'm sorry, an editor, a freelance editor on the outside down in Florida where I was able to mail my handwritten uh, journals to her and she put them into manuscript form and um, 
in 2008, I started, uh, I learned how to write a query letter and started writing uh, query letters to uh, handwritten and maybe some typing with an ill-quality typewriter that they had available in prison to um, publishers and agents everywhere. And this started in 2008, and I uh, had a friend send in the Writer's Market, if anyone knows what that is. It's a resource directory of, of um, agents and and uh, publishers, and so that started in 2008. I dedicated two days a week to just writing uh, to publishers, and I had enough uh, rejection letters to, I would tell people to wallpaper the entire prison. But it was in 2014, June of 2014, which I didn't know at that time yet that I was being released. I still was thinking I was gonna have to endure this whole 10 years. Through some correspondence with Dolores Cannon, she offered me a contract. And um, so that was just, uh, just brought tears to my eyes like you would not believe. It was just such a joy. And that was